Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about the advanced mandolinist. What in the world is the advanced mandolinist? Well, it's many, many things, and especially at the Artist Works Mandolin School where I teach. It's a variety of musical styles. By the time we you know, begin to think of a student as being advanced, they're usually playing bluegrass, or maybe they're not 100% focused on bluegrass. Maybe they're 50% uh, swing players and 50% bluegrass players, or maybe they've begun to tackle some Brazilian choro music, or they're playing some classical, they're playing some Bach. And uh, I love this about the site, is that we get such a wide variety of players coming in from all different uh, musical worlds with different percentages of emphasis in all these different categories. And, um, you know, what does it mean to be an advanced player? Well, you know, certainly it means playing more advanced tunes, you know, and playing with a a kind of uh, a clarity to your playing, playing clean, uh, and playing um, with with a lot of uh, interest and, and and focus on on harmony and rhythm, syncopation. And what I mean by that is, you know, do you are you really playing within the harmonic structure of a tune? You know, say you're playing something like Salty Dog Blues, uh, simple little bluegrass tune, but it goes around the circle of fifths. E, A, D, G. It's in the key of G. Let me be a salty dog, or I don't want to be a man at all. I let me be a salty dog. Let me be a salty dog, or I don't want to be a man at all. I let me be a salty dog. all that. <laughs> well, it's pretty peppy for one. Um, the, the part I'd like to shine a light on right here is to be in the chord uh, scale, arpeggio, that is happening at each moment. Um, sometimes you'll hear players play on this, they play really fast, uh, but they keep it in G pentatonic for all those chords. You'll hear the chords go by, but what you'll hear the player playing is something more like this. And while that might seem uh, just as fast or, or, or hot, um, what we're missing in that is the tonality of each chord. So uh, when we go to, we start on G, we go to an E now. So what is E? Is there's a world of E. So we need to be in that world during that chord. Now it goes to an A chord. That's A, very different than E. Now D. Very different than, than A. And now back to G. So that's what I'm, I'm uh, really wanting players to uh, focus on at the advanced level when they improvise. Because this begins to open the doorway to jazz and playing what we call on the changes, playing through the changes, making the changes. So that when you uh, eventually get to something like all of me, Now I'm in A. 
D minor, A, D, E, A minor, D7, D minor, G. You, you following me? Each of those is a new harmonic world. Uh, and, and understanding your arpeggios for each one of those and sort of landing notes that are... Arpeggios are great because they're going to really give you the chord tones. And you know, if you're in C, E, with a flat 7, A, D minor, A, D, they're going to give you a kind of nice triadic uh, foundation to work out of. And it's, and it's, and it's going to really teach the hands to uh, feel, feel E7 as a different world from C. Just like piano players have, you know, all the white keys are C. Then when they go to A7, they have this completely different shape because they have certain black keys that they need to hit. They really need to hit C sharp and F sharp. And, uh, and G natural if it's A7. And, and so that feels completely different in the hand. You want to get to that place as an advanced player on the mandolin where each chord, a sort of landing lights light up on the fingerboard where you're saying C looks like this and you can kind of see red dots in all the C zone. You might have green dots for the arpeggios and red dots for all the other stuff <laughs> in your mind. It becomes a thing where uh, you just see it. You see C right there. You see E. But the beauty of the mandolin is that we're symmetrical. And so when you learn one position like that, and you start with your index finger, it moves all over beautifully. This is a, why, why I think the mandolin is the greatest of all instruments, perhaps. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why I like to say it's... it's um, I wouldn't say easier than, than guitar, but I feel freer on it than guitar because you don't necessarily have to know what string you're on. If you're on the root with this finger, the fifth is always going to be there. The octave is always going to be there. The sixth will always be, you know, these, these shapes uh, really get locked in on the mandolin. On guitar, because it's tuned irregularly, it's different depending on what string you're on at that moment. So uh, something to think about. But anyway, this is just a little, a little, you know, insight into the kinds of things that are happening at, at, uh, at the online school. And I encourage you all to take a visit, uh, sign up for a bit, no matter what your level. Uh, we're, we're diving in deep over there and really exploring all this stuff. Uh, people send me videos of themselves improvising. I make notes and then I create a video and uh, give them tips. Sometimes they're playing along with a rhythm track and I might try and find the same rhythm track that they're using or one very similar to it and, uh, and break it down, stop and start, talk about uh, ideas that they could use, whether rhythmic syncopation ideas, uh, octaves, uh, chromatic ideas, um, whatever, special effects we can come up with to make their plan more interesting. All right. So I hope to see you over there. Be well. Good luck with 2016. And uh, we'll be here at the Mandolin uh, School whenever you need us. Ciao for now.